Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to a live broadcast as always of a coffee with Chris. I'm delighted today to be joined by a very special guest but just before I introduce him I do as always have to big up our official charity partner Big C who help local people affected by cancer. Now without further ado Stokely Howard who is with me today is the creative director of an incredible local based video agency called Trendy Grandad. These guys are all about creating results driven video production for brands. Stokely, let's start this conversation by just making it really super simple for people to understand. Let's clarify what the short form video actually mean. <laughs> short form video. Well, it means a lot to a lot of people, really, it depending on what industry and, and sector you're, you're in. Um, for example, if you're if you're a fashion brand, short form video and, and it can be two to five seconds. Right. But if you're more in the manufacturing industry, for instance, um, short form video could be around 30 seconds. So it really means uh, means th different things to, to different sectors and, and, and has different rules for different sectors as, as well. Brilliant. Love that and absolutely agree with it. I think it's a little bit confusing for people. So I just wanted to clarify that before we sort of got stuck into this into this yeah. conversation. And, and Stokely, what, why should businesses care about short form video? Because there's a lot of noise about all sorts of other areas of digital marketing, of, of long form video. I still think there's mm. perhaps some, some work to be done with regards to short form video. Why should business owners care about it? I think business owners in particular should care about it because um, we as consumers consume up to, I think it's 100 minutes of video per day or or something ridiculous like that. It might even be more now. I think the weekly average is around between 17 to 19 hours of video consumed per week, which is just crazy when you think about it. Mm. The, you know, YouTube is the, is the second largest search engine below Google and TikTok is in the, in the top 10 now of search engines. Mm. Like people are not just wanted to consume video for entertainment, but they wanted to consume video for education, for knowledge and, uh, and to search. And, and that's just a massive re re revelation. So if, if you, if you aren't using video <coughs> within, well, if you weren't, weren't using it within the last 10 years, you, you probably missed out on a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of money on, on your bottom line. Um, because that's how people are searching and that's how people are buying and that's how people are selling. So that's why it's very important. And that's how people are trusting, right, Stokely? Because we, we are, many of us are, are, are visually minded, right? And that there's a massive area of psychology that we could geek out into around how your brain processes images and videos quicker than, than written word, right? And I, and I think for me anyway, I still feel a slight bit of resistance when, when speaking to businesses about particularly short form video. I think they see it as maybe fluffy marketing content as opposed to actually strategical content does that annoy you stokely <laughs> yeah yeah i guess it does it in some ways and it's it's a fair point that, that you mentioned strategic it's, it's because they haven't bothered putting a strategy behind it uh and because it does have because video content does have such a short shelf life nowadays well it does have a short shelf life if you don't do it right but it, it does compared to other forms of marketing like seo etc it does have mm. a short shelf life but the way people look at video, they shouldn't just look at it as just one short form video. It should be a whole strategy, a whole suite of content, and that should align with your marketing goals in general. So that's the way you should be looking at it. It's just a change of, of reframing your mindset, really. Love that, matey. And it actually really frames up nicely my, my next question for you, which is let's let's do a short form versus long form hit thing here, right? Which one would you personally prefer and also is it as easy as that with regards to when you go into a business to chat to them because it's pretty well known now that actually if you start by investing in long form video you can then obviously chop it up into some short form stuff do you agree with that don't you agree with that pour all of your wisdom upon us <laughs> well the, the thing is is that everyone wants a result no one really wants a video and that's the way you've got to look at it so you've got to find the right tools to get you that result and whether that's short form or long form to get you that result then that's what you've got to decide but it's it's 
it's yeah it's how you're going to use this video is this video going to be hooks is it going to be for your ads is it going to be for conversion is it going to be for many different there's so many reasons as to why a video could be used and you've just got to think about the end goal and work and figure out what tools you need to get you to that end goal and that's how you should be looking at video and short form and long form as well because they both still have their place but many people don't think that but they both still definitely have their place just um people are using them in the wrong place use, using the wrong tools for the job right and um that, that's where people are going wrong yeah i i you know you're preaching to the converted here so i, I definitely <laughs> agree with you on yeah. that um, i think too often people are one or the other aren't they right and actually i'm so pleased you mentioned hooks it's something that marcus hemsley spoke about who i know is associated with you guys now um he spoke about the power of hooks with regards to content, but actually in video too, they're so important actually. So actually in a, in a funny sort of way, it doesn't matter whether it is short form or long form because yeah. I guess businesses that are investing in video or they're trying to do video themselves, they tend to suck at those hooks. So just give us yeah. a bit of a taster into the world of hooks because one of the things I've noticed about your video content, Stokely, not just the content that you produce exceptionally well for all of your clients, but for your own personal content on LinkedIn, you nail those first two, first three seconds, right? So give us a crash course in video hooks. <laughs> video hooks. Well, if you think about it in terms of, in terms of like looking at a movie, for example, a, a movie is, 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 has got lots of hooks in it, but people don't actually think it does because telling a story over a long period of time is actually really, really difficult. Telling it over a really short period of time is also really, really difficult, but they both have hooks in there. They both need to keep your attention, not just at the start of the videos, but also throughout them as well. And that's what a lot of people don't realize is that a hook isn't just for the first two seconds, for the first three seconds. Nowadays, our attention spans are so, so short. We need to engage people along the whole course of the video. It's one thing just getting a consumer to watch your video and standing out amongst the, the, the hundreds of minutes of video that's uploaded to, to YouTube or TikTok every single day. But it's a, it's a completely different thing, keeping them there. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. And if you don't keep them there by in, having more hooks throughout your video, you're just wasting your time, money and, and effort, essentially. Oh, I love that. We, I mean, we could quite easily do like a three hour podcast on, on video hooks <laughs> and all the various things that you advise and implement for all of your clients. It's absolutely brilliant what you do. I love how engaging, your, I love how engaging your content is, Stokely, not just for your LinkedIn account on trendy granddad stuff on your client stuff. And um, I want to ask you about that because you're so right. And I'm so happy you brought up attention because it's the most important thing when it comes to social content. It's in my opinion, forgive me if I'm wrong and you want to bully me out this answer. I think it's the most important thing with, with video that must come first. Why, why do businesses suck at grabbing attention on video? What is it about their video content? That's perhaps a little bit bland and boring. I think they, they think about it too much um is, is the worst thing that they, they overthink about it and so mm -hmm. people when they come to film their own content they think about they think about their brand too much they think about the the um the the, the camera equipment they're using too much when they're missing the really simple things which is the authenticity and the personality and what's in front of the camera that's the thing that's gonna that's the thing that's the most mm -hmm. important thing but beyond anything else so um i think that's where businesses are going wrong a lot of people we often say this when we're filming with with people is that people are so so focused on what they're trying to say that they forget to look happy on camera <laughs> and it's such a common thing it's like look happy like look like you're trying to actually enjoying what you've got to say mm. um and and yeah i think it's just focus on the simple things really and that's how you're gonna engage people and um and then of, of course i can't forget authenticity just just being you is is is, is golden really I agree with that entirely. When I switch that mindset from I'm just going to be creating all of this perfectly polished content all the time to I'm just going to unapologetically be me on social media, that's actually when my business saw a much bigger return on investment with regards to all of the effort I was doing with, with creating video content. I guess without sharing your, your secrets, essentially, Stokely, how, how do you how do you do that with your clients? Like, how do you get people comfortable on video? Because this is a big area that I see so many people struggling with, like chronically struggling with getting comfortable with being uncomfortable on video. Right. And I would really love to know how do you do it? And then also, how do you get your clients to be comfortable enough on on video as well? 
I think there's a common misconception nowadays between quantity and quality. Um, mm -hmm. And people think like maybe like 10 years ago, the quality was up here and, and quantity was down here in terms of your volume of posting and, and, and obviously the, the quality of, of what you're posting. Everyone think, right, I have to post not so much, but I have to post a lot. But nowadays in the new age of, of, of TikTok, especially like pushing the, 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 the post button is just as important as the quality button. And um, those two have now quality has gone down and now it's aligned with quantity. So how you actually become better on camera uh, is just by doing lots more of it. Just keep going and keep going. It. Try and do it once a day. Try and do it, start off with once a month, once a week and then once a day. And then eventually you just you just you just live on the camera, <laughs> basically. Do you, th do you think, Sophie, people are stuck in maybe the, I'll call it TV advert mindset? Now, I know that you guys do actually produce video quality enough for, for, for TV production as well, which is which is brilliant. But do you think people are maybe stuck in that mindset for all of their content and therefore they're not in that execution over perfection space? They're just like, oh, I need to say the exact perfect thing. But it's almost our imperfections that make our clients our prospective customers trust us and our products more would you would, would you agree with that absolutely like it's all about the trust indicators and and nowadays i mean it's even shifted like our business in the way that we run like we used to just do professional professional video professional photography but nowadays um you know we're we're doing the the creator-led stuff that we're getting uh, ads that we're getting for our clients and producing for our clients is is just as respectable as the professional um content that we're doing so there's a massive rise of, of creator-led content and and, uh, and unpolished content and content filmed on your phones. And it's just as important, just as important now, if not does see better results a lot of the time than the professional video does. Um, so yeah, it doesn't, your stuff doesn't have to be perfect. It's not about being perfect. It's about authenticity, most, most of all. Absolutely with you. Does it annoy you, Stokely, when, and this is, forgive me for a selfish question, but from the, the land of social media agencies over here, it really frustrates me that when people actually do commit to video and they do go to a company like Trendy Grandad and they say, right, we need, we need video, they take on board all your advice, they create this exceptional video strategy, campaign, et cetera, and then they just kind of, they just kind of throw it out in a really poor, untimely, unstrategized way. D does it frustrate you that, you create all of that exceptional video and then essentially the client then just sort of throws it out. Essentially what I'm asking you, Stoke, is would you give people permission to post the same thing twice? Because I see so many people just posting one video, like, right, that's it, brilliant, job done, right? But there's, there's so much more to the to the game than that. Um, yeah, it definitely does annoy me. I mean, we've learned from this in the past and it's something which we're, we're quite hot on nowadays. and. And something which we, we we try not to let clients do as much as possible and and that's that that starts from very much from the start of, of working with us right if we're just mm -hmm. if client says to us we want a video okay here's a video and there it is and we just deliver it we felt like we've only done 20 percent of our job right you know it's like building the foundations to the house if your foundations aren't are rubbish and, and made out of cotton wool they're just going to crumble uh, and that's what and that's what the, there's the sorts of questions that we're asking right at the start of our conversations is, you know, what's your overall marketing strategy? Um, you know, how can we how can we affect the conversion rate on your website? What's the current conversion rate? What's your average order value? What's your what's your click through rate on your meta ads? These are the questions that we're, we're, we're diving deep at the start of our mm -hmm. conversations so we can tap into that and actually create video that's driven by results and not just driven by creative. Um, mm -hmm creative it's all good creative looking good but if it doesn't actually um generate any money from your bot for your bottom line then um that's probably going to like i said going to be a waste of time money and effort and uh, they're not going to be happy with us and not going to use a video production company again and and ultimately not think that video works and that's why a lot of people don't think video works yeah it's because of that um because they haven't applied a strategy if i was with you now in person i feel like i could like feel the heat from that response because uh, you can like, feel the, the frustration. And I think that is a, a good point that I would highly advise people do is 
don't just engage with bog standard agency that just films some video for you and leaves you alone. You really need to work with an agency like Trent Grandad that do the the pre, the during, and and the and the post production stuff as well, and the video strategy and the implementation and the the execution of that content because you will get so much more return on investment. And as and as Stokely has rightly highlighted, what's the point in just producing? yet more noise if it's not actually um if it's not building your bottom line so great shout there stokely um what would you i know i know that there's so many things you could say here stokely but what are your perhaps maybe top two top three pieces of, of advice for businesses that are perhaps like yeah we get short form video we get the why we know that it's important but, but what would your main piece of advice be for businesses that are about to start their journey in that area of digital marketing um, so number one would be something I've mentioned already, which is, is quantity is just as important as, as quality at the start. Um, mm -hmm. So just getting it out there, just trialing, you win or learn, right? It's it's getting out there, see what works. If it sticks, it doesn't. And then you just learn about it, you adapt and you move on. And I've been posting videos online now for the last four years and I'm still fluffing it up. <laughs> so, so quantity is just as important as quality nowadays. Um, and then the second thing, which is the, which is the biggest um, stumbling block when it, when it comes to uh, businesses or brands um, uh, doing their own video in house is thinking of ideas. The, the usual response we get is, "Oh, I'm not an ideas person. How do you think of ideas for video? How do how, how the earth do how on earth do I tell a story within 15 seconds? Like that's just impossible." Well, there's a few ways to act, gen like there's a few processes you can have that will help you get to that idea stage. The first the first one is um, is look at references in uh, in in, in opposing industries so if you if you're a, a fashion if you i don't know say for example you're a, a law firm and you're looking at all of the other law firms out there all that you're going to do is just create the same content that all the other law firms are creating so look at ideas and look at references from other industries completely wild to you like fashion brands or whatever then you're going to create something more original for your industry so that's idea number that's how to think of get ideas number one Number two is um, ask your team, ask other people to, to help you as, as much as possible. Um, the, the, the usual cycle for coming up with ideas for videos is bad, 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 terrible, good. And that's that's the <laughs> usual cycle. So it's not just gonna, you're not just gonna come up with an amazing idea straight away, it just doesn't happen. Um, yeah. And then and then the third thing is um, our team, TG, we have a, a Slack group or WhatsApp group. We just call it the idea pop. And, as I said at the start, we're consuming 100 minutes of video a day, doom scrolling as, as all of us do. Just copy those links and just put them in the idea pot WhatsApp group or Slack group um, mm -hmm. when you get them. So when someone in your team has to think of video ideas, they can just scroll through this WhatsApp group and just click on the links and just find inspiration. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my answer to your question, Chris. <laughs> that was absolutely sublime, sir. I, I love that. There's so much to take from that. First of all, I think I, I'm so happy that you've unapologetically come on this podcast, Oakley, and you've said actually quantity is actually as important as quality. And I've had some really challenging conversations <laughs> with, with people, even in the last year, actually, uh, where they've gone, well, I don't believe that you need to be posting consistently on LinkedIn. Uh, and I'm like, well, yeah, you shouldn't be posting consistently on LinkedIn if the quality of the video is crap, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Then you need to invest in good video and then post more. I, I think that's brilliant. And then the ideas piece, though, as well, completely validate that. Um, my little tip on that is there's a great tool online which I advise that the businesses jump on. It's called answerthepublic.com. I'm not sure if you've heard of it, Stokely, but essentially what you can do is you can type in your industry. So let's use that example again, a, a law firm, for example. Type in law firm, press enter. And then what it does is it essentially harvests all of the all of the questions, the top search questions in Google, and it spits mm. it out. With you. So what you can then do is then you can produce your video content answering the questions that people search on Google, which then hopefully you will agree, Stokely, then really helps with that, that key point that I know that you guys specialize in, which is video that produces results because you're answering your clients and, and customers' questions. So you're speeding up the process between prospect and customer, which is what social is all about. Would, would you agree with that or am I talking rubbish? Do I need another coffee? Uh, no, 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 absolutely agree. I think I think what people do is, is, a common mis 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 uh, is a common mistake is they compare themselves to like huge companies that have huge creative teams and they yeah. can put quality up here and quantity up here. Mm -hmm. They can post them all the time because they've got teams of like 
20, 20 people, right, that can do all this. So if you're just a one-man band in a business or there's a team of three of you, don't expect to be at that level. Just, like, be realistic about it for a little bit. If not, you're just going to stress yourself out. So with you. And speaking of mistakes, though, Clee, what are, to, to, to flip that previous question now to mistakes, what are the top mistakes you see people making with their short-form video? Where are businesses getting it wrong at the moment? Um, I think a lot of things were covered here that they're not, they're not thinking about the strategy. They're, they're trying to cover too many, too many topics. They're not, they're not developing their own, their own niche. And that's not coming across in, in their video as just as much as other things like not doing it. <laughs> it's probably the biggest thing. Um, and, um, thinking too much about the tech as well as, is, is another thing. You don't need to think about the tech. That's all the, the gear, bit, really. All the gear, all no the gear, idea. no idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stokely, this, this, thank you for your time today. I, I really, really appreciate it. There's so many directions that we can take this in, and, and, and we'll definitely have to do a round two, round three, round four, four at some stage if, if, if people have enjoyed this. Uh, Stokely, j just so we, we can get a, 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 a completely acceptable plug in there for you, where can people find you, Trendy Grandad? How can people purchase your, your services? Well, um, thankfully, with a strange name like Trendy Grandad, you type it in Google and we rank number one, <laughs> which is which is useful. Um, yeah, you can find me obviously on LinkedIn under Stokely Howard or uh, Trendy Grandad anywhere and you'll find us absolutely everywhere. Amazing. Stokely, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much to everyone that's thank watching. You. Thank you so much that everyone is uh, listening back as well. If you've enjoyed this episode of Coffee with Chris, then why not subscribe to us on YouTube? Why not subscribe to us on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, all of those lovely things. Get involved in the conversation as well. Respond with a comment, and I'm sure Stokely will happily get back to you with his tips and tricks on short form video. As always, one more thank you to our charity partner, Big C, who help local people affected by cancer. I'll see you guys this time next week for another episode of Coffee with Chris. <laughs>